Yo, what is good, YouTube? Welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, I'm going to be ranking every single Nebula card from worst to best here at NBA 2K24, my team. There's 15 cards that came out in the Nebula promo, and we're going to be ranking each of them from worst to best. And I will say, a lot of these pink diamonds are really nice today, which is a huge W. They're mixed in higher up on this list, and honestly, some of them are just truly top-tier cards. There's a couple of truly elite pink diamond options. Honestly, the vast majority of cards in this drop, I would say all but one, are really, really solid very usable online cards and honestly every single one can be used online in at least a solid level almost all of them at elite level top tier like this is a great drop with a ton of great cards it is obviously a shame that nine of these 15 cards are gate kept behind gambling only that's terrible we've talked about it reiterated many times and it sucks 100 but that's not really the point of this video we're gonna just rank these cards from worst to best so before we hop into if you haven't already make sure you hit that subscribe button help me push towards the 25,000 subscriber mark on the channel i upload every single day would really appreciate it if you do subscribe without further ado let's hop right into it number 15 pretty easily is this Danilo Gallinari he is the worst uh the fact that he is the worst is a significant step forward considering he's not that bad he's got 90 speed he's a great great shooter decent athlete has pretty complete badges all the way around doesn't have like handles for days brick wall immovable enforcer he's not an insane defender but he's a 6'10 small forward who can shoot the crap out of the ball admittedly release isn't that great either he's just not that good of a card but he is the only card out of these 15 that I do not think is at very worst a super solid level online card, if not even like a top tier competitive type guy. 14, for example, is this Bradley Beal. This card is not bad at all. He is 6'4 with hotspots from everywhere, 20-something Hall of Fame badges, really great slasher, shooter, and playmaker, and defensively, he's certainly not bad either. He's just not huge, not an elite level defender, and in all honesty, I don't think he has top, top tier SIGs either. 2K could have done a better job giving him some better animations, probably souping them up a little bit more. This card is not bad, but he's not the best, and this is the best drop in terms of how deep this drop is and how good it is, so putting him at number 14 is pretty fair. Jordan Walsh is 13th. He's just not special. He's a big 6'7 versatile shooting guard who's got good athleticism, very capable shooter, pretty good playmaker as well, and an elite level defender, phenomenal defender, has gold immovable enforcer, really good card, dunks the ball at a high level, good shooter. Like this card is super duper solid. The fact that he is this low on the list is pretty darn impressive because his release is not top tier. I mean, it is good, but it's a teensy bit on the slower side at this point, being only on normal um, pro dribble style is actually quite solid and Kobe escape is also very good so he's got some pretty good sigs this card is very good and honestly if this behind the back is a very good behind the back which I'm not certain whether or not it is to be honest but if it is he might even deserve to be a little higher on this list he's a really good card though and the fact he's this low should go to show how good this drop is number 12 same type of thing Dyson Daniels great 6-7 versatile defensive point guard got good athletic ability 85 driving dunk a lot of playmaking and defensive badges unfortunately not top top tier sigs his release is good he needs some shooting bad is added though besides mj dribble style i don't love the rest of his six to be completely honest and the same side burst is not good uh basic as he is a bad one so release is super smooth off the catch and shoot he's got some pretty good playmaking badges he's a good athletic point guard had got a lot of size at six foot seven and he's a very good defender but i still think he deserves to be kind of lower on the list because of the lack of playmaking nor elite shooting uh lack of six i should say nor elite shooting number 12 or sorry number 11 i should say is alex caruso who is legitimately the best viable point guard off of the player market in the game and he's yet at a number 11 on this list sorry number he should be number 10 uh, my bad i messed this up number 11 is supposed to be siakam uh we'll get to caruso in a second at number 10 my bad i have siakam behind caruso despite having better all around slightly better all around stats and badges than caruso does because number one he plays a more stacked position at the small forward position um he's not like quite as good at his position in my opinion as caruso is at his um siakam is a great card but i don't love love his release it is smooth and easy to green sure but it's not super fast mj dribble style tray escape does give him some really good sigs and normal fade as well is certainly not bad i like the card on paper, just looking at him compared to Caruso, he is a quote-unquote better card. But I do think positional value matters to a certain extent, and Caruso is much more positionally valuable than a guy like Pascal Siakam is. So to me, I think he is the better quote-unquote card, which is why I have him at number 10. Statistically, he is one of the best pink diamonds in the game. 95 speed, 93 three ball, 95 driving dunk, amazing defender, 90 plus across the board. Tons of defensive badges. He's one of very few point guards in the game with the movable enforcer, ba movable enforcer badge, which is a big badge. Good playmaker, great shooter, really good finisher. He's got his really sound quick, which is pretty solid. MJ dribble style, step behind the back, gives him the curry slide. The rest of his sigs are not 
great, but normal fade as well. Really good, versatile defensive point guard with a ton of athletic ability. Super complete at one of the most important positions in the game. Alex Crusoe deserves a spot decently high on this list and is an amazing card. So even putting him this low kind of hurt. Same thing with a guy like Dino Raja. Incredible card, and it's hard to put him this low, but I think that's kind of fair. At the same time, 6'11 with a 7'11 wingspan. This is a top tier card. I mean, the top 10 or 11 of these guys, really, once you get past Dyson Daniels, when you start with Siakam and up, everybody else is an elite level competitive card at very worst. You could change your opinion on what order these guys should be in considering they're all so good. But uh, Dino is where I have him at number nine. 6'11, 7'11 wingspan. The wingspan is huge. The dunking is amazing. He His player build is massive. He defends so well and plays so many lanes and does so many different things because of his player build. Has off anchor, movable enforcer, post lockdown, rebound chaser, good playmaking badges. Needs upgraded shooting badges for sure. You want to add things like agent three, blinders, limitless, maybe handles for days, maybe a fast feat, something along those lines. Uh, uh, but he's a very solid shooter with a nice smooth release on quick damage base is good jared vandal the upper not bad uh fade isn't top tier but that's okay mj dribble style is nice especially with his level of size as well he is such a good card at the power forward center spot and i kind of like caruso i think he might be the best viable option at his position in the game right now he is that good that is how high i am on dino raja um number eight's gonna be pow he's gambling only and he's not special for a gambling only big like guys like d rob and hakeem are better uh at the same time he's I mean, he's got good speed. He's a great shooter. He's really complete badge-wise. He's a dog, obviously. An elite-level card. Kobe dribble style. Um, Pro escape is not amazing, I will say. I don't love, love the release either. Like, you could very easily make an argument for a guy like Dino over Paul, Pau, in my opinion. Pau is certainly more complete as a base card, but a badge Dino is just as good as Pau. I will say that. And you could definitely definitely switch those guys. I just think I think Pau gets the small edge, at least as a base card. Number seven is going to be Dwayne Wade. D. Wade's real only, if you want to call it a flaw, is the fact he's only 6'4". He's not huge. That's about it. Outside of that, he is phenomenal in pretty close to every way. Does not have a movable enforcer. There's another quote-unquote flaw if you're looking for him. Uh, but he's a point guard. I, like I said, that's not a big deal, I don't think. Uh, I think he's better animation-wise than a guy like Caruso. He dribbles better than Caruso. Pro 2 fade is better than Caruso's fade. Uh, but he's just a better card, in my opinion, than Caruso is. Maybe a slightly better release statistically they're both amazing but i think d wade's probably a little better and badge wise he's definitely more complete so really good card he's just a slightly better version of a guy like caruso in my mind in a lot of ways i feel like wish he had a movable enforcer yes but he's a great card i think number seven's a pretty fair spot number six is going to be andre Godala, who's also immaculate a phenomenal card six six with a six eleven wingspan really his only flaw if you're looking for them again is the fact that his release is not unbelievable everything else about the card is amazing he's one of the most versatile and elite defenders in the entire game has Hoff and movable enforcer at the two. Really good playmaker with top tier SIGs, an elite level athlete with great finishing badges. Pretty good size at shooting guard. Big player build makes him look bigger than 6'6. And um, MJ dribble style, Kimba escape hard and behind the back. Some really good SIGs there. Pro 2 fade with a really easy upper and a release that is very solid. But if, again, if you're looking to nitpick, the Nate release would be the thing you would nitpick at, probably. Overall, he's still an amazing card. I think top six on this list. Number five, C. I made this list before I recorded a Lamar Odom gameplay, and now that I've recorded Lamar Odom, I almost wonder if this is a little bit too high. I really like the card, but I think I like Iggy more. So you know what? I am calling an audible, and I'm actually moving Odom down a spot. So I would have Odom at six, and I would have Iggy at five. So there you go. Odom at six, not five, but 6'10 at small forward. Uh, it gives him incredible size. He plays power forward very well as well. He's a very versatile defender, but he does not have a movable enforcer, which is one flaw. Number two, SIGs are not incredible. The Trey Young behind the back is really good. KD escape, which I think is what he has, isn't great. Uh, he's got a good standstill release. He's a super, super athletic big. That's one of his best attributes is his versatility athletically. He's, he dunks everything. Uh, and then his release is also very smooth. Pro 2 fade is nice. Kobe dribble style is pretty good as a good push cross, but Sigs could be a little better. I mean, Kobe dribble style, Trey escape, give you, or Trey behind the back, I should say, give you some decent ones, but the Luka moving Hezzy and the KD escape certainly hurt the card a bit. To the point where I think it's it's nitpicking again, but like he's when you're looking at the best cards in the game, which is kind of what this drop is, it's kind of fair. So we'll both put him at six. Iggy's at five. Pink Diamond Tyrus Thomas is at four. This is the best Pink Diamond card in the game, and it's not close. He is better than every Opal that came out today, in my opinion. That is how good this Tyrus Thomas is, in my opinion. Uh, only one three-point hotspot, I know. Only a base 383 ball. I understand that. 
but he is six foot nine at small forward with a seven three wingspan so he's got elite level size he has elite level finishing elite level defense and very very good playmaking as well of course every batter is upgradable which means you can add things like agent three blinders limitless range dead eye spot finder that type of stuff 96 speed 95 driving dunk 90 standing dunk amazing all-around defender the 83 ball is low yes but he's got one of the best releases in the game ben shepherd's base is incredible such a smooth easy release it's a park base nate robinson's fade by the way is also very good and then Kyrie dribble style Kemba escape elite Jamal Murray behind the back and then John Wall's drag back gives him arguably the best sigs possible basically in those areas the one flaw is the Lucas same side Hezzy I don't know why they gave that to him as well it's really annoying but outside of that he's an absolute stud and I truly do believe he is one of the best cards in the game not just best pink diamonds in the game but the top three are pretty easy number three is Brandon Roy he's amazing he's phenomenal he does everything well He's obviously a dark matter. Now, this card barely exists, but he is phenomenally good. Incredible defender. Really, really good release. Going to slash at a stupid high level. Uh, amazing fade. D-book fade on him is really, really good. D-book dribble style. D-row size. I will say his escape isn't the very best, and neither, honestly, are his. I mean, his sigs are very good. Uh, I would say besides the escape, they're absolutely phenomenal. So he's a really, really good card. But again, like, if you're nip, is he that much better than a guy like Tyrus Thomas or some of these other cards lower than him? The answer to that is not really. I don't think, as good as these top guys are, I don't think they're that much better. Like, number two is T-Mac to me. T-Mac's the best shooting guard in the game, and literally this T-Mac is close to as good as a shooting guard can get for the rest of the year. And yet I still don't think with the way that the game works this year, he's that far like OP. He is an insane card. One of the best in the game. Dominant in every single way. 99 stats. Basically perfect badges. Even has half a movable enforcer. Kobe Fag, T-Max release. Just incredible animations across the board. He's an absolute dog. Kyrie dribble style. Kemba escape. Uh, Jamal Murray behind the back. John Wall's drag back. The best animations and sigs in the game. At the same time, like he's only, he's really, really good, obviously, but he doesn't even really exist. And if you play against him, is he going to be that much of a difference maker where it's like unfair? The only way that's the case, I feel like, I, like I think skill level still matters. I don't know. This T-Mac is really good. And yeah, he's paid to win, but he's almost impossible to pull anyway. I don't know. Number one is Wimby. Wimby's the best card in the game simply because he's 7'4 with an 8-foot wingspan while having 90-something speed with a shoe slash coast boost. Insane all-around badges. He's just unfair physically because of his size, speed, shooting, ability to put the ball on the floor pretty well. Pro 2 fade, insane defense, length that is unfair defensively, especially with badges like anchor and immovable enforcer and stuff. He will do things at a level defensively that will make, and I think uh, offensively too on the interior, at a level that will make him a bit unfair. And I just think compared to every other card position like he's he's more head and shoulders above guys like kareem or yeah 100 obviously, obviously 100 overall kareem other big men like that that are 100 overalls and then obviously although those cards don't exist obviously nobody has those but then all the other options at the uh the big man spots wilt Giannis, akeem d rob the gambling bigs the non-gambling bigs they're not as close to wimby as i feel like all the gambling and non-gambling other options at shooting guard are to guys like t-mac and brandon roy with guys like kobe Iggy from today's drop. Gerald Wallace is another gambling card. Obviously, non-gambling cards like Wiggins and Allen Houston and Pink Diamond Kobe even are still very good. Like, there's a lot of good options. This Jordan Wallace is an amazing 3 D shooting guard who does some things really well. Like, overall, these are not, like, that ridiculously OP of cards, I feel like. I think Wimby's kind of the exception to that. He's pretty unfair, but... I, I'm not a fan of this style of content, but I, I guess I just thought I'd come and rank these cards and give you all my opinions. So I hope you all did enjoy the video. If you did, make sure you hit that like button, leave a comment and subscribe. I'll be back with more 2K content very, very soon. And I appreciate y'all. Peace.